We're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, uh, having our discussion with uh, the monthly panel involving Gary Marr, of course, the Honorable Gary Marr from the Canada West Foundation and former uh, Ontario Economic Development and Trade Minister, Sandra Pupatello. Do you want to take us to the, the budgeting process? April 16th is the, the federal budget. Uh, Gary, we just had an Ontario budget uh, presented by Peter Bethlen Falvey, who will be a guest on this program uh, in the weeks ahead. But the thing that uh, I, I was quite shocked at, I suppose, or concerned about was the real diminution of uh, revenues from personal uh, income taxes, as well as corporate tax revenue, showing a real softness in the Ontario economy. Uh, that meant that the deficit ballooned to a higher than expected level. Uh, and, uh, and, and so consequently, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the big stories about the Ontario Budget now. I, I don't. I just wondered whether that sort of colors your your expectations for the federal budget. Should we be tackling spending and deficits more aggressively, or what do you expect, uh, Gary? Do you want to give us your point of view first? Well, let me say that uh, Ontario is not the only province that's having difficulties. If you look at the recent budget tabled a month ago by the um, NDP government of uh, Premier Eby's in British Columbia, it's a dramatic. It's a dramatic deficit uh, increase that they've got in that province. Here in the province of Alberta, it's uh, you know a province that has been accustomed to multi-billion-dollar surpluses. Uh, they have a, a budget that is barely in surplus, just by the narrowest of razor margin uh, numbers. Um, and, and with respect to the federal government, um, you know we've had some signals uh, through the fall economic statement that came out. Um, you know, about what it is that they're going to try and tackle. And, uh, you know, but we've got some we've got some serious issues. And, you know, the Bank of Canada recently sounded the alarm bell about uh, how the relatively weak productivity uh, of, the, of Canada is an alarm. And it's an alarm that could trigger further inflation. And the way that works is, in part, it's about housing. And right. uh, so... Uh, housing, uh, as the prices continue to go up, um, you know, it's employers are being forced to pay more uh, to their employees. And that is, of course, reducing um, the productivity uh, of uh, of our workforce uh, because they're being paid more to do the same thing uh, without a change in productivity. So I would think in the next federal budget, we've seen signals that they're really going to focus on, um, you know, uh, housing. I think that remains the same. I, I think they need to think about uh, trade infrastructure because we're a very trade dependent country. Uh, you can't move it. You can't sell it. So if you want to move auto parts out of uh, Southern Ontario, you got to have the infrastructure to be able to make it work. And, but this is a very tricky thing for the federal government because they actually don't have that many tools for housing. Uh, they've got funding and they've got tax policy. Right. Uh, but a, a lot more of the measures that can make a difference on housing uh, rest with provinces and municipalities. And so just spending more money on housing, doing it faster to get more, is actually not going to result in the kinds of communities, I think, that we want to live in mm -hmm. and work in. So uh, there has to be a completely different way that we approach the housing issues uh, where uh, federal provincial, municipal, uh, developers, not-for-profits, all work together in a way that we haven't seen before. Uh, that's a more sensible approach to it. Now, Diane Francis uh, recently wrote a piece about why is Australia doing so much better than we are? They've got lower unemployment. They've got higher GDP per capita. Right. Um, you know, in, in part, if you look at their immigration, it's been pretty level throughout, you know, uh, throughout the period of covid um, they maintain their levels of immigration, about 80,000 people a year. In Canada, it's 480,000 people per year. Right. And so I'm not saying that immigration is bad. I think most Canadians actually support uh, immigration to this country and recognizing that people can contribute uh, and build their lives and help build the country. Um, but it, has it been too much all at once? Uh, that is partly what is contributing to our challenges in trying to build housing here in the city of Calgary, where I live, 
um, last year, 85,000 people moved to Calgary. And the city had a record number of housing starts at 17,000. So right. people move on average 2.3 units to a family. You take 85,000 divided by 2.3, right. we're still behind right. uh, You know, in terms of our ability to house the people that are coming. And that's true um, all over the country. 